Yeah, you're here for um, yeah, Angular, right? Learning Angular. So before you um, before you get started with Angular, you need to know uh, programming language mm -hmm. we use in Angular. So we have TypeScript. It's the first uh, class uh, supported by Angular. And Angular itself is made from uh, TypeScript. That's why you, you need to learn TypeScript. So anyway, so a quick uh, introduction about me. So I'm Devlin, Udula, independent.net uh, developer. Also a SEO consultant. So most of the time, I go to developers event. Uh, if I'm not coding, or if I'm not uh, the developer circuit event, I'm in a me medical mission. So that's what I do, what I like to do. I also love uh, traveling. So let's go to the history of JavaScript first. You know this guy, Brendan I. So yeah, um, I think in 90s, during 90s, um, there was a, a project called Monaco Project. You know, that time they were competing who's gonna win the, the internet, the media that internet will be using. You know? uh, that time, World Wide Web won. You know? Dub dub dub. How uh, how did they won the? How did they win the? Called this the, the Monaco project no? because they they can render image tag. No? So World Wide Web can render image tag. But if you can render image tag, if you can use image tag. There's a lot you can do no? by image. You can you can um, share. Your, I mean, you can show your photo. You can show your uh, your brand image and everything. No, it's it's better than than just text. In short. So. Um, a Netscape, no. they started the, the dub dub dub, and they hired Brendan Ike, as far as I remember. So Netscape asked Brendan Ike to create a programming language no? intended for students. Why? So that students can easily adapt to this type of programming language. For how many days? For only 10 days. No, so this guy, Brendan Ike, a very smart guy created JavaScript in 10 days and intended for students. Hmm? So, so that's uh, JavaScript. So yeah, um, this is the the type of um, of uh, it's the browser supposed to be. So this is HyperCard. Before it's in the Macintosh. So Macintosh has this uh, software, and Netscape wanted something like this for the web. So they asked, yeah, they asked um, Brendan Ike to create a um, programming language where they can um, use it to create something like this. So let's go to TypeScript. So TypeScript, you know, as you can see here, JavaScript that skates. So TypeScript is a type superset of JavaScript that compiles to play JavaScript. So yeah, uh, TypeScript is just a, it's a JavaScript. So meaning superset, ja uh, TypeScript is also a JavaScript, but JavaScript is not a TypeScript. Simple as that, it's a superset. Something like this. So this is TypeScript. Yeah. And ECMAScript meaning the next, the next version no, on top of it. And ECMAScript 6, ES6, ES5, ES3. So um, yeah, let's see what we can find in TypeScript. So it's an object-oriented uh, programming language, in paradigm. So it's a uh, OOP. No? Familiar with OOP is Java here, Java developers, Java developers, ah. and <laughs> .NET. No. Okay. So it's a OOP language, meaning it's a object oriented. That's a static typing. It's a very useful thing in, in TypeScript. Why? So you get intelligence in static typing. You only get uh, intelligence through static typing, including your what type of uh, object is that. So typing is actually um, it's like a, a library no? when you can install in your project to get Intel. So for example, you're, you're working in a, a Express, and you don't get this IntelliSense. 
if you're a JavaScript developer, you can still use these typings. Just install npm, install at typings, and then the name of the whatever library you're using. So you can get intelligence. Imagine that. So what is static typing? It's a big deal. Yes, but it gives you two link. So let's see what kind of tooling we can get from, from TypeScript. First, we can get squigglies. For squigglies, squigglies, uh, the line under under your, say, your, your method or your, your keyword, it warns you. It warns you. Real IntelliSense. What is real IntelliSense? Huh? Because you normally see IntelliSense in your IDE if you're uh, working on let's say Visual Studio 2017, or you're using uh, WebStorm, PHP Storm, or JetBrains IDE. Those are not real intelligence. Those are just um, provided by your IDE. The, the, the IDE gives everything. It, it knows no? whatever you, you might type in the IDE, but that's not the re, uh, real intelligence. Real intelligence comes from uh, static typing. Okay. Code navigation. Can you do, uh, who's familiar with code navigation? When you right click on a keyword or method, you'll see uh, uh, how it was implemented. For example, um, um, right click, go to this uh, implementation, no? go to this. Uh, you cannot do that in, in JavaScript, in my experience. Uh, in order for you to, to see how uh, a method is implemented or uh, a function is implemented in, in JavaScript, you need to do control shift. F no? and type for the, the, let's say, phrase or method in order for you to see the, the implementation in JavaScript. So you don't get that from in, in JavaScript, only in um, static typing, code navigation. Go to definition. Normally, you, you can see that in Visual Studio. Error reduction, no? because it warns you. We'll see about this later, more about this later. Error reduction, we do the like coding uh, or demo. Productivity. Uh, my clients are paying me per hour. So for them, it's, uh, it's a win-win. Because, yeah, per hour, imagine that I can I can increase my, my productivity through using TypeScript. It's better. Uh, I can do a lot of things in just, say, one hour. And of course, maintainability. As your app get, uh, gets bigger, imagine if you're um, writing an app in JavaScript, as it gets bigger, it's hard to maintain. No, usually it's, you can, you, you're afraid to, to edit, you know, or edit a function or replace a function. You just put some, some more codes on it, just to, you know, <laughs> make it look better or, or, you know, run whatever you want to. Pancit code. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the pancit code. The pancit code. <laughs> pancit. It's, hard to, it's hard to maintain. Right. Pansy. Let's say you're you're working on uh, a project with hundred thousands of codes. Mm -hmm. no? who, who who's here uh, encounter a uh, hundred thousand lines of codes in a project? Oh. We encountered a hundred thousand lines of codes. It's hard to maintain, no? <laughs> Normally fifty thousand is my normal project. Fifty thousand lines of codes. But imagine let's say Facebook, no, it has I think seven million lines of codes. Imagine that you know, in a in a JavaScript. It's hard to read and it's hard to maintain. So this is a uh, TypeScript. This, these are the tooling that TypeScript can give to you. So this is the ratio of time spent reading versus writing. It's well over 10 to 1. Well, that's true, huh? Because every time I, I join a, a team, huh? working on a current project, or, or they, they ask me to, to uh, add some features, most of the time, the whole day, you know, I just spent reading the code. You know? So normally, I just I, I just uh, read the code because I, I need to know what's happening in the in the project, right? So you don't go there and you know you work and then you write some code. No, you, you don't. You know, normally you don't understand what's happening in the in application. That's why you read most of the time. And sometimes it took me it can take two up to two days just understanding this the the code or everything in your source code, right? So this is uh, uh, it's true most of the time. And this is also the reason why we need a maintainable code. 
Good code, most of the time, just a few uh, swearing from, from uh, your colleagues. So, you, you want to be uh, this guy who wrote the code like this, and uh, when you when you when you quit your uh, when you, when you uh, leave your your company and uh, the next uh, developers uh, you know uh, take a look in your your code and this this um these are the things that they might say uh, you want to be that developer like, <laughs> like that. So, yeah of course you don't want to be you don't want to be the, the developer who writes some spaghetti codes right. It's, it's, it's embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, it's very embarrassing. Confusing. Very confusing. It's expensive. <laughs> Instead of just writing uh, codes, just uh, read their code and try to understand what's happening. So where you can get uh, TypeScript? You can get TypeScript through uh, Visual Studio 2017. Finish uh, there. TypeScript there. Visual Studio 2015. Visual Studio Code. And uh, some um, uh, 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 editor, you know, like uh, let's say Sublime Atom or Visual Studio Code. Yeah. And then install TypeScript, which is meaning uh, global. So let's go to the syntax and stuff. So types, these are the types of uh, TypeScript. So you have a uh, void, class, interface you know, for Java and uh, .NET. String, boolean, uh, number, enum, any, any means is uh, you go back to uh, to the JavaScript. And then you're using the same what's happening in JavaScript, uh, dynamic. So any uh, number, nullable, no, void, never. And we have namespaces as well, uh, like in, in that namespace. But we don't use this anymore, namespace. Later you'll see why. So this is namespace. We have classes. Classes. So for me, if you're doing uh, OOP, I know you're familiar with this classes. Constructors. We also have constructors in TypeScript to create an instance of uh, an object. Private members. For example, fields. Fields. Properties, public members. So actually, this is the this is the long long part. I mean, uh, yeah, the long long version. <laughs> and we have the shorthand mem uh, members. It's a short short way of uh, writing. Uh, yeah, properties. You don't need to create a field, private field, and initialize that. It's automatically um, yeah behind the scene. It's uh, already initialized. Public with first name. And string, so that's how you you write uh, this uh, static typing in the types. Properties, getter, etc. And we also have functions. Of course, this uh, TypeScript is also a JavaScript. Arrow functions. If you're using an ES6, not in JavaScript. Actually, TypeScript is like a ES6, similar, exactly the same ES6 with extra tooling and uh, typings. Because if you're using uh, ES6, it's super easy to, to migrate to TypeScript. So that's the arrow functions, or the fat arrow, lambdas you know, in, in .NET. Delegates. You can uh, parameterize delegates. So because you're using a uh, functional programming language. Enums. Also have enums, like in .NET. Do you have uh, enums in Java? Mm. Numeration? C, C++ and C. And generics. Mm. Yeah. Generics. Generics. Also in <laughs> Generics and TypeScript. Uh, what else? Collection. Generitans. Yeah. You know, see? They have Java. extends there. Uh, OOP. It's like a Java class superhero extends person. It's been inherited. And yeah, super. No? If your yeah, if your uh, inherited class has this uh, argument in their constructor, you need to pass a, a super or a base interfaces. So interfaces are structurals, and yeah, modules. No, you replace namespaces. Also, uh, actually, namespace is still in, in TypeScript, but 
Uh, this is what we use no? when you're trying to include the modules in TypeScript. Actually, in ES6, this is um, the way you have to do it. So, import the module from the path. Uh, from the path. And export. No? So, familiar with export. Export meaning you're uh, exposing no? your uh, class. It's like a public. Let's go to transpile and compile. So uh, the, differ, uh, the difference between transpile and compile. Transpile is um, from source code. Transp uh, yeah, from source code TypeScript into source code JavaScript. Mm -hmm. Unlike compiling, compiling is uh, from a source code no? to bytecode. Oh, yeah. So that's a uh, difference between transpile and compile. So transpile source code to source code, uh, compile source code to uh, bytecode. So how do you compa uh, transpile your TypeScript? You can use Gulp, Grunt, and Webpack. Webpack. So let's do some demo. 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 You can play around TypeScript just by going here, playground. So yeah, this is TypeScript. So as you can see, there, there are two columns here. Uh, left one is uh, the TypeScript, and it will uh, be converted into JavaScript on the fly. So let's try to write something here. Ah, it's still loading. Anyway, let's remove this. Okay, let's say we have a function. Now let's say add. And as x and y. And then return. This is a uh, TypeScript, no? Cinema in back. And this is JavaScript. TypeScript, JavaScript. It's big difference. Huh? <laughs> 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 None, right? Because yeah, uh, TypeScript is JavaScript. Let's say, uh, what if we put so this is optional in TypeScript. You're not required to write a static type. This is optional. So what if you converted this into string? Do you see? 
Three, right? Because you say, argument of type 2 is not a assignable parameter of type 3. But when you take a look at your uh, JavaScript function, it doesn't warn you. So in TypeScript, there's a warning. But you can still compile this. It's no problem. Uh, it's, you can still uh, compile or transpile, but it'll give you warning. That, that's good. In, that's uh, yeah. That's what I, what good thing about TypeScript. So what else? So let's try you know. So you know. And let's uh, take a look at uh, JavaScript. <laughs> <laughs> so this is your enum in TypeScript, and this is your enum in. Because yeah, normally uh, JavaScript doesn't have enum. So this is uh, yeah, uh, TypeScript does it um, um, behind the scene. <laughs> this is the implementation of Inam in JavaScript. Mm. So as you can see, it's, a, it's clean code, right? So uh, most of the time, the comments that I get or feedback that I get from AngularJS, because you know, AngularJS, uh, you write you you write AngularJS application in types uh, in JavaScript. But uh, when they migrate it into Angular, uh, most of them, their comments is they, they like um, TypeScript. It's, it's cleaner. It's cleaner. Mm -hmm. uh, so a lot of uh, uh, static sugar, syntactic sugar. So yeah, so that's... Uh, so let's go back to slides. So, uh, let's talk about JavaScript uh, works, what we don't like in JavaScript. So this is the reason of why uh, most of us OP developers don't like uh, JavaScript. So for example, for it, it's uh, very confusing because uh, if you as you can see here, for let x in my strings, no? let's say you have uh, an array of Chris and James strings, uh, and you uh, do let x in my strings, or simple uh, simple for loop, instead of getting Chris and James, we get the, the what? Zero and one, that's the index of the array. And when you have um, an object, no? object with name and age property. When you do uh, this uh, simple for loop, you get this name, age, not the Chris that you wanted. And Chris and uh, 37 age. So what you have to do is, instead of using for in, we use for off. So what's for off? For example, you have um, an array you know, of name here. When you do for let x off you know, of my strings, we get what you wanted, the names. And so now, Chris and James. So yeah, um, forget about for in, use for off. Now, scoping, so functions. Functions, it's it's hard to read, and it's very unpredictable, especially if you're using a lot of callbacks. So there's a, a better way of uh, doing that. We use Lambda. In, in TypeScript and in ES6, 
Lambda is better, or in fat arrows, the fat arrows. Because it's uh, predictable, what you want most of the time, you'll get what you want. So this is a uh, fat arrow, so uh, instead of using the normal function, you know, use, uh, you can use uh, these uh, fat arrows. And you can, you know, commit, commit the, the function table. For example, this one. So scoping variables. So var, var is a uh, global, right? In, in JavaScript. So instead of writing var, we use uh, let. Same as in ES6. So let meaning uh, encapsulated in that uh, particular location. What else? So truth and falsy. If you're not using, if you're not <laughs> familiar with JavaScript, this kind of uh, confusing. Now in in .NET, you only have this uh, true or false, these two, yeah, boolean, or in, in Java. But in JavaScript, they have this truthy and falsy. So what are the true and uh, false values? False, zero, empty string, <laughs> not is also uh, falsy, undefined, none, what is none, not a number, right? Uh -huh. And everything else are truthy. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, uh, it's kind of confusing if you're not using JavaScript. So yeah, and everything is dictionary. So yeah, I have something here for the end of slides. I have a quick. Um, actually, this is not part of. Um, of the types of presentation. Uh, so it's, uh, it's only for uh, JavaScript experts. Let's see. Array 15. Minus 1. Minus 1. Hmm? Minus 1. Eh. So what? Point, point, minus 1. Minus 1. Can you guess? Uh, to, uh, yeah. Syntax error. This is the, this is the, this is the fun part. Hmm. Stack over free shirt though. Oh, my free shirt though. Free shirt. Who can get that? Toy minus one, Batman. Okay. See this? Okay, let's Marvels. Marvels. Batman. So, yeah. Ah, yeah. That's, uh. That's all, folks. So yeah, <laughs> that's all the folks for, for uh, the TypeScript. I hope you like it. And uh, yeah, this is my Twitter.
Thank you, thank you for listening.